Hello and welcome to our daily Bible reading. We're continuing in Exodus and in Psalms. So let's pray and ask God to speak to us. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you so much for your word. Now I pray, cause it to nourish our hearts, our minds and our souls and help us to live out the truth that we're about to ingest here, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Come with me now into Exodus chapter 35. Moses assembled all the congregation of the people of Israel and said to them, These are the things that the Lord has commanded you to do. Six days work shall be done, but on the seventh day you shall have a Sabbath, a solemn rest, a holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on it shall be put to death. You shall kindle no fire in all your dwelling places on the Sabbath day. Moses said to all the congregation of the people of Israel, This is the thing that the Lord has commanded. Take from among you a contribution to the Lord. Whoever is of a generous heart, let him bring the Lord's contribution, gold, silver and bronze, blue and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twined linen, goat's hair, tanned ram skins, and goat skins, acacia wood, oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil, and for the fragrant incense, and onyx stones and stones for setting, for the ephod, and for the breastpiece. Let every skillful craftsman among you come, and make all that the Lord has commanded, the tabernacle, its tent, and its covering, its hooks, and its frames, its bars, its pillars, and its bases, the ark with its poles, the mercy seat, and the veil of the screen the table with its poles and all its utensils, and the bread of the presence, the lampstand also for the light with its utensils and its lamps, and the oil for the light and the altar of incense with its poles, and the anointing oil and the fragrant incense and the screen for the door at the door of the tabernacle, the altar of burnt offering with its grating of bronze, its poles and all its utensils, the basin and its stand, the hangings of the court, its pillars and its bases, the screen for the gate of the court, the pegs of the tabernacle and the pegs of the court and their cords, the finely worked garments for ministering in the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron the priest and the garments for his sons for their service as priests. Then all the congregation of the people of Israel departed from the presence of Moses and they came, everyone whose heart stirred him and everyone whose spirit moved him and brought the Lord's contribution to be used for the tent of meeting and for all its service and for the holy garments. So they came, both men and women, all who were of a willing heart, brought brooches and earrings and signet rings and armlets and all sorts of gold objects, every man dedicating an offering of gold to the Lord. And everyone who possessed blue or purple or scarlet yarns or fine linen or goat's hair or tanned ramskins or goat skins brought them. Everyone who could make a contribution of silver or bronze brought it to the Lord's, brought it as the Lord's contribution. And everyone who possessed acacia wood of any use in the work brought it. And every skillful woman spun with her hands and they all brought what they had spun in blue and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twined linen. All the women whose hearts stirred them to use their skill spun the goat's hair, and the leaders brought onyx stones and stones to be set for the ephod and for the breastpiece, and spices and oil for the light and for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense. All the men and women, the people of Israel, whose heart moved them to bring anything for the work that the Lord had commanded by Moses to be done, brought it as a free will offering to the Lord. Then Moses said to the people of Israel, See, the Lord has called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and he has filled him with the Spirit of God, with skill, with intelligence, with knowledge, and with all craftsmanship to devise artistic designs to work in gold and silver and bronze, in cutting stones for setting, and in carving wood for work in every skilled craft. And he has inspired him to teach both him and Oholiab, the son of Ahismach, of the tribe of Dan. He has filled them with skill to do every sort of work by an engraver or by a designer or by an embroiderer in blue 
and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twined linen or a weaver by any sort of workman or skilled designer. Oh, just a couple of thoughts there about Exodus 35. These people were about to go wandering through a wilderness. It's often called a desert, but it's actually a wilderness. A little bit of a distinction there. And by giving each of these people a job, a task, it was actually something, I think, that gave people a sense of purpose, a sense of ownership of this whole thing. And it, it's very, very clever. Everyone could play a role. We see their role could be in contributing. Some we see in the New Testament are described as having the gift of giving. It's a valuable ministry contribution. Others had the work of gathering. Others had the work of being able to take fabric and use it um, and weave it and, and spin it and so on. Others had the, the, the skill of being able to take metalwork and woodwork and being able to use that in the construction of the tabernacle, which a tabernacle essentially means a tent. And this tabernacle was one that had a, a big fence around it made of linen and wood and silver and, and then inside it there were other components of it as well. And so everyone had a, a stake in this. Everyone had a contribution. The other thing I just want to point out too is it, it refers to the priests. Under the old covenant, the tribe of Levi was set aside for the work in the tabernacle and later when Solomon built the temple, which was a permanent building, not just a tent. But within the tribe of Levi, there was a clan of people and they were the people directly descended from Aaron. They were known as the Aaronites. or the, 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 These are the people that, that could qualify as priests. So you had Levites that could work in and among the tabernacle in the temple who were to assist the priests and the priests were the descendants of Aaron. Now a priest simply means this, one who ministers on behalf of God to people and on behalf of people to God. So they're kind of a mediator, an, an intermediary. The New Testament describes Jesus Christ as our high priest. He is the ultimate mediator. The New Testament also says that once you come to Christ, once you are connected with Christ, you become a priest. This is the, the idea that Peter brings up. It's, the, it's called the priesthood of all believers. We no longer need another human mediator because we have Christ. We can now boldly approach God in, in as much right as the priests of the Old Covenant had. In fact, more. And so let, let's continue in Exodus 36. I just thought I'd point a couple of those things out for us to consider. Exodus chapter 36. Bezalel and Alhaliab and every craftsman in whom the Lord has put skill and intelligence to know how to do any work in the construction of the sanctuary, another word for the tabernacle, shall work in accordance with all that the Lord has commanded. And Moses called Bezalel and Aholiab and every craftsman in whose mind the Lord had put skill, everyone whose heart stirred him up to come to do the work. And they received from Moses all the contribution that the people of Israel had brought for doing the work on the sanctuary. They still kept bringing him free will offerings every morning so that all the craftsmen who were doing every sort of task in the sanctuary came each from the task that he was doing, and said to Moses, The people bring much more than enough for doing the work that the Lord has commanded us to do. So Moses gave command, and word was proclaimed throughout the camp, Let no man or woman do anything more for the contribution for the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing, for the material they had was sufficient to do all the work and more. And all the craftsmen among the workmen made the tabernacle with ten curtains, they were made of fine twined linen and blue and purple and scarlet yarns with cherubim skillfully worked. The length of each curtain was 28 cubits and the breadth of each curtain 4 cubits. All the curtains were the same size. He coupled five curtains to one another and another five curtains he coupled to one another. He made loops of blue on the edge of the outermost curtain of the first set. Likewise, he made them on the edge of the outermost curtain of the second set. He made 50 loops on the one curtain. He made 50 loops on the edge of the curtain that was in the second set. The loops were opposite one another. And he made 50 clasps of gold and coupled the curtains one to the other with clasps. 
so the tabernacle was a single hole. He also made curtains of goat's hair for a tent over the tabernacle. He made eleven curtains. The length of each curtain was thirty cubits, and the breadth of each curtain four cubits. The eleven curtains were the same size. He coupled five curtains by themselves and six curtains by themselves, and he made fifty loops on the edge of the outermost curtain of the one set, and fifty loops on the edge of the other connecting curtain. And he made fifty clasps of bronze to couple the tent together, that it might be a single hole. And he made for a tent a covering of tanned ramskins and goatskins. Then he made the upright frames for the tabernacle of acacia wood. Ten cubits was the length of a frame, and a cubit and a half the breadth of each frame. Each frame had two tenons for fitting together. He did this for all the frames of the tabernacle. The frames for the tabernacle he made thus. Twenty frames for the south side, and he made forty bases of silver under the twenty frames, two bases under one frame for its two tenons, and two bases under the next frame for its two tenons. For the second side of the tabernacle, on the north side, he made twenty frames, and there forty bases of silver, two bases under one frame, and two bases under the next frame. For the rear of the tabernacle, westward, he made six frames. He made two frames for the corners of the tabernacle in the rear, and they were separate beneath but joined at the top at the first ring. He made two of them for this way for the two corners. There were eight frames with their bases of silver, sixteen bases under every frame, two bases. He made bars of acacia wood, five for the frames of the one side of the tabernacle and five bars for the frames of the other side of the tabernacle and five bars for the frames of the tabernacle at the rear westward. And he made the middle bar to run from end to end halfway up the frames. And he overlaid the frames with gold and made their rings of gold for the holders of the bars and overlaid the bars with gold. He made the veil of blue and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twined linen with cherubim skillfully worked into it, he made it. And for it, he made four pillars of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. Their hooks were of gold. He cast for them four bases of silver. He also made a screen for the entrance of the tent of blue and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twined linen, embroidered with needlework, and its five pillars with their hooks. He overlaid their capitals and their fillets were of gold, but their five bases were of bronze. Well, that sounds like a almost reading blueprints uh, today in, in our culture, separated from this by thousands of years. This just sounds so foreign. But what we're going to see as we come into the New Testament, particularly in the book of Hebrews and even the book of Revelation, that all of this has very, very significant symbolic impact. The fine white linen, Paul describes that as being our resurrected body, that, that which enables us to come into the presence of God. The fact that the temple, the, sorry, the tabernacle was facing west, that, that the, the rear of it was to the west. Again, there's a sim symbolism here. The fact that you come through the, the four-posted gate, speaking of the call to all the earth, coming through to the, the brazen altar. The first thing you have to do when you come into the presence of God is surrender your life. The next thing is the, the wash basin. You have to come and present yourself and, and be washed in the word, the word of God. And then to come into his presence, we see that there was the incense, speaking of prayer. There was the, the, the bread, again, speaking of the word. And there was the candle, speaking of the spirit of God. All the elements necessary for having a, a daily walk with, with Christ are all represented in the, that tabernacle picture. So it sounds odd. It sounds foreign. But every one of these details from the top capping, it all speaks of what Christ has done. And we'll, we'll explore this as we go through uh, the Bible as well. Let's come now into Psalms. And as, as well, we're, we're looking at Psalm 35 and Psalm 36 of David. Contend, O Lord, with those who contend with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler and rise for my help. Draw the spear and javelin against my pursuers. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Let them be put to shame and dishonor who seek after my life. Let them be turned back and disappointed who devise evil against me. 
Let them be like chaff before the wind, with the angel of the Lord driving them away. Let their way be dark and slippery, with the angel of the Lord pursuing them. For without cause they hid their net for me, without cause they dug a pit for my life. Let destruction come upon him when he does not know it, and let the net that he hid ensnare him. Let him fall into it to his destruction." Then my soul will rejoice in the Lord, exulting in his salvation. All my bones shall say, O Lord, who is like you, delivering the poor from him who is too strong for him, the poor and needy from him who robs him? Malicious witnesses rise up. They ask me of things that I do not know. They, re they repay me evil for good. My soul is bereft. But I, when they were sick, I wore sackcloth. I afflicted myself with fasting. I prayed with head bowed on my chest. I went about as though I grieved my friend or my brother. As one who laments his mother, I bowed down in mourning. But at my stumbling, they rejoiced and gathered. They gathered together against me. Wretches whom I did not know tore at me without ceasing, like profane mockers at a feast. They gnash at me with their teeth. How long, O Lord, will you look on? Rescue me from their, dest from their destruction my precious life from the lions. I will thank you in the great congregation. In the mighty throng, I will praise you. Let not those rejoice over me who are wrongfully my foes. Let not those who wink the eye, who hate me without cause. For they do not speak peace, but against those who are quiet in the land, they devise words of deceit. They open wide their mouths against me, saying, Aha, aha, our eyes have seen it. You have seen, O Lord. Be not silent, O Lord, be not far from me. Awake and rouse yourself for my vindication, for my cause, my God, my Lord. Vindicate me, O Lord, my God, according to your righteousness, and let them not rejoice over me. Let them not say in their hearts, Aha, our hearts desire. Let them not say, We have swallowed him up. Let them be put to shame and disappointed altogether who rejoice at my calamity. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor who magnify themselves against me. Let those who delight in my righteousness shout for joy and be glad and say ever more, Great is the Lord who delights in the welfare of his servant. Then my tongue shall tell of your righteousness and of your praise all the day long. Psalm 36. To the choir master of David, the servant of the Lord. Transgression speaks to the wicked deep in his heart. There is no fear of God before his eyes, for he flatters himself in his own eyes that his iniquity cannot be found out and hated. The words of his mouth are trouble and deceit. He has ceased to act wisely and do good. He plots trouble while on his bed. He sets himself in a way that is not good. He does not reject evil. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens your faithfulness to the clouds, your righteousness is like the mountains of God, your judgments are like the great deep, man and beast you save, O Lord. How precious is your steadfast love, O God. The children of mankind take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light do we see light. O oh, continue your steadfast love to those who know you and your righteousness to the upright of heart. Let not the foot of arrogance come upon me, nor the hand of the wicked drive me away. There the evildoers lie fallen. They are thrust down, unable to rise. These psalms are virtually what's called imprecatory psalms. An imprecatory psalm is when the psalmist, the one writing this poem, this song, is wishing, wishing pain <laughs> on their enemies. And sometimes the language is quite graphic, but it, 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 it expresses how people were honestly feeling. It's not that their feelings were justified by God, but it shows just the depth of feeling that people felt. Many people have read the Psalms and said, that's how I feel. And then as you read through the Psalms, you see that the Psalmist points the reader to God that they can trust God to be their vindicator. And I think that's what we need to do as well. Let's pray. Father, no matter 
what people say about us, no matter what people do to us, no matter how many people set themselves up as our enemies, we trust you that you are the God of justice. You are the God who will vindicate us. Help us to walk with you in a way that, Lord, even our enemies will will eventually know this person is sincere, genuine, and they really do know you. So I pray, Lord, that today, no matter what harm people try to do to us, we will ever look to you and that we will be like Jesus, praying for those who spitefully use us and mistreat us. Help us to do this well, to the honour and the glory of Christ, I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for being a part of this journey. We are on a journey going through the entire Bible in one year. Some of these things may sound foreign, but we're going to make our way through it. And eventually, as we get to the New Testament, there'll be some aha moments as we see why some of these things are in the Old Testament. If you haven't liked this video yet, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please be a part of the team. Come on this journey with us. Subscribe, you'll get the notifications, and you'll be, you'll be able to join us each day. And the liking and the subscribing is all a part of the, the accountability to come on this journey of reading the Bible through in one year. If you've got any questions, maybe I haven't, maybe I've, I've glossed over something that, that you're confused about, just leave a comment there and, and I'll try and answer that as soon as I can. God bless you, and I'll see you tomorrow for another Daily Bible Reading.